Hey there, game developers. This is Titan Hex. I'm here to give you another RPG Maker MV tutorial on the database. So the database is an awesome tool that we use to set up a whole bunch of parameters on our game. A lot of that uh, skills, actors, a whole bunch of stuff. So we're going to go through each tab real fast and we're going to save each individual or each set of tabs for a later tutorial. So let's go ahead and run through it real quick. In order to get to the database, there's three different ways. We can click this little shortcut right here. We can go to tools and click the database here, or we can hit F9. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the database to open it, and bam. We have several different tabs here on the left, and we can just click through each tab in order to get to different parts of the database. So your database will typically start at actors. We're going to go through and just talk about actors real fast. Actors are characters in your party. They will follow you around um, behind you if you set the game to allow that. Whenever you add them to a party, they'll appear behind your party members in a, the order that they are set up uh, in the party list. So you'll see more about that later, um, but just know that these actors don't ever appear on the map. They only ever appear behind you if you set them to be in a caterpillar formation. So we use events and we make it look like these characters are on the map. And it's important to remember that eventing is how you make it look like these characters are walking around on their own on the map. So we never really set that up. Um, you'll see more about that as we go through eventing, but you never really set up anything here in order to get characters to appear um, to join your party and things like that. So just know that there's a very distinct difference. So these are the actors. There's a whole bunch of things we can set for our actors, um, but we're going to go ahead and jump to classes. Now, classes are tied to actors, and they determine a lot of things like what they can equip, what changes in the parameter take place, their growth of parameters, uh, their experience curves, the name of the class, just a whole bunch of stuff. And we can set that through eventing. We can change a character's class through eventing. Some plugins will also allow us to change classes in the menu, uh, but there's just different ways to do it. Um, it it's, it's very useful, so just know that. Now, anytime we have actors and classes we can change the maximum amount using this i mean if you wanted to you could set 200 classes uh typically it's there's a, a slight change in efficiency it's it's so minute that it is unnoticeable uh if you have a 500 or five classes but just know that there is a slight performance change so now we have skills Skills are what your character can use both in and out of battle to do a whole multitude of things from fighting to teleporting back to the beginning of the dungeon or exiting dungeons or things like that. So if we need a skill, bam, here it is. We set it up here and there's a ton of stuff we can do. The formula itself is huge and we have that in items as well, but the formula does some pretty awesome stuff. We don't have to, we'll go into that in a later tutorial. It'll probably be big, um, but we can set up a whole bunch of stuff for skills and items, weapons and armors. They kind of lump together a little bit. Um, I might do skills and items together and then weapons and armors separately, but you will see when I do that tutorial, we'll go more into it. Uh, we have a whole setup of weapons to create that have all sorts of different things they can do. So they can manipulate your stats typically. They have animations that are tied to them. We can set what type of weapon they are. And I'll show you how to add more weapon types later. We have prices, uh, different things that are changed when you have it. Uh, armors, we can do a ton of stuff with the armor. Um, the traits over here can do a whole host of different things. And we'll go into that in another tutorial. So then we have enemies. Enemies are just single monsters that we set up to fight, and we will add them later on to a troop, 
and then you can set those troops to be fought through encounters or through eventing right now there's really not much we can do with this so we're going to jump over to troops now the troops are obviously what we use we add enemies to so if i wanted to add a bat to this guy i can throw a bat right here and then auto name it to bat two slimes and a bat so i can also remove it auto name uh and align so this guy right here allows us to create these troops and the troops can be put into the encounters or we can set up a troop encounter through events we'll go more into eventing later right now it's uh such a big to big thing to cover that we won't cover it right now so with all this um there's really not much to, to tell you there's some eventing we can do which is great for boss fights or special battles that can change the whole condition uh, enemies have AI right here that we can set. Uh, the rating, which is right here, is works a lot like weight. Um, I, I'll, I'll go into that when we go into enemies and troops. So next we have states. States are your status conditions and things like that. There's a ton of different things we can set up for states. There's plugins that can build on the state settings to make them really really cool um, plugins are, are an awesome thing to have they there's so many plugins that can manipulate states uh, the lunatic engine is one of my particular favorites but for now uh, there's just it's a little bit constricted but there's really some pretty cool things we can do with states just on its own so next we have animations animations oh wait um just a quick break here so one sec all right so the different animations are just all over the place uh they don't do anything special they don't hurt they don't like cause more damage or anything they're just animations that we attach to items and weapons and armor and things like that even some states um and it makes makes it look like something's happening so it's, it's a very visual thing and that that's the main purpose of it there's a whole different thing set of things we can do with animations in fact it's probably going to be it's it's definitely going to be its own tutorial and it's probably going to be a fairly large tutorial for those who like to do animations, there are there's some pretty decent tools. If you're pretty good with graphic design and Photoshop and stuff like that, you can probably set your own animation. But this allows us to just have little small pieces like you see here and be able to manipulate it a ton of different ways so that we don't have to use like a huge amount of the sheet that we're given for battle animations. So then there's tile sets. We'll probably go into tile sets on its own. There's a whole bunch of different things we can do to create tile sets, which basically determine how our map functions and what you can walk on, under, and what you run into. So there's not really a lot to go into here without just going into the whole thing, but we'll go into each of these little guys um, later on. Common events is probably going to be part of the eventing tutorial, and it's going to probably be its own separate thing. Common events are super duper useful. There's like a ton of stuff we can do. And we don't want to get overcrowded with it just yet. But when you start to see the the amazing things, uh, the shortcuts that common events allow and the, the cleanliness to our events that it can create, you'll really come to appreciate common events. So not a lot of people get into the common events or animations, but I, I like to just as a person who is starting to learn animation and somebody who is just really amazing with events <laughs> just just to toot my own horn uh, i i am one of the best eventers around and i love to teach eventing because of some of the amazing things i can do with it and some of the amazing things that i would like other people to do with it it helps you just not have to be so reliant on plugins so next we have the system buttloads of things we can do with this uh, just tons and tons. 
So we can choose whether or not we use the side view battler. Uh, we can start with transparency. Just so many checks and things we can do. Uh, we can add music and sound effects here for our different menus and um, different events that happen. So then we have the attack motions. Uh, that is something that you'll go more into de detail on later. For now, we don't have to worry about that. Uh, that's setting up a side view battle. So our starting position and a ton of other things are set here. Next, we go on to types. So this is how we set new weapon types, new shields or new armor types, uh, different status elements and things like that. We can name them. We can add more of them. We can do a whole bunch of skill types, so different menus that we can see when we are using spells and special abilities. Just a ton of different things we can do with this. And then lastly, we have the terms. So terms are sort of the flavor of your game. You can change an attack to hit or whatever you want. Um, we can change what the default messages are. Like whenever a monster appears, we can do xyz emerged um, or we can do it so it appears or shows up whatever uh, for the message the default message we have a ton of parameters we can set basic status statuses we can change it so it's not called max hp it's called uh, hit points or instead of max mp it would be ether we can set a whole bunch of that mana all that stuff we can set up so that's how we can manipulate the database and each of these will get its own little separate section uh, their own little tutorial that will really build up on them so that's kind of it this is the database um, we'll go into each one and we'll you'll learn how to really manipulate it to make the game you want and to add the flavor uh, this battle formulas you want I mean that's that's one of the cool things you can do you can set it so that the basic attack isn't just this little default attack you can go look up the the attack formula for final fantasy you can look it up for dungeons and dragons you can set up a whole bunch of stuff here so just keep that in mind and with that that is the database tutorial we'll go ahead and give each one the each of them their own little one and just please go through each learn a bunch about it there's so much you can learn just by going through each of these tutorials that i have set up as always if you want to comment and tell me some sort of problem you're having or if you want to uh, some problem you're having with this tutorial, if you want to suggest a tutorial that you really want to see, I appreciate it. Uh, if you hit like, that just lets me know that you're supporting me, that you appreciate these tutorials and you want to see more. And if you subscribe, that is also a great way to show your support and to stay informed and get up to date when the new tutorials come out and maybe you can start creating the best game you have possible using that um, soon i'll probably have a bunch of awesome tutorials uh, just come at them at your leisure as always i appreciate it and i'll see you in the next tutorial